Our family stayed in Qatar as an extended layover for 10 days. We did not expect to like Doha. I mean, it's just a massive city like every other big city out there, right? Here's what we did in this time and how our minds changed about a country and a culture we never thought that we wanted to see. Stone family, and while we're thrilled to share our journey with you, these videos have a special purpose. They're a living scrapbook for our daughter Shanti to relive our family's experiences when she's older. Your enjoyment and support means the world to us, but ultimately, these are our heartfelt home videos crafted with love for Shanti's future. Join us as we explore new cultures, create lasting memories, and document our growth as a family. And we hope that you'll find joy in them too. First, let's explain why on earth did we have a 10 day layover in Doha, Qatar? Our family travels full time, so like and subscribe if you like that kind of content. But I mean, because we travel full time, we are always looking for like budget friendly flights or deals and discounts. I mean, who isn't? So we were looking at flights to Southeast Asia and the flight times were unmanageable. The, the prices were crazy. So I broke it down and looked at the, the major connecting flight cities and found out that if we booked one ways to each individual city, it demolished the price. It, it was incredible how much we saved. And Doha, Qatar was on that list of connecting cities that we could travel to first and then continue on. An embarrassing confession, I had never even heard of the place. Traveling in this way allows us to experience a new country and kind of get a free vacation out of the money that we're saving on flights. But, okay, back to the main point of the video. So we have eight reasons why Doha Guitar completely changed our minds about this country. Number one being the Guitar National Museum. This place genuinely blew our minds. So we homeschool our daughter Shanti. We use locations we're visiting as a part of her education. And the Guitar National Museum was top notch and we all really, really enjoyed it. Another great part about it is that Shanti was free and we're going to talk later on why Doha Guitar is so family friendly, but this just is one of the examples. There was interactive games for Shanti and us to do. Then later on throughout the museum, we really learned about the deep culture of guitar and it was incredibly interesting to learn about which made the next part, the number two, the Souk Waukee, so much better. And this actually really made the trip special for us. The Souk Waukee was by far our favorite part of this entire trip. The museum taught us about the past culture, but the Souk Waukee actually brought that culture into real life and it was so cool to experience. This place felt like it was off of a movie set. Really though, like at any time they could say cut and then everyone would go back into different characters. Like they <laughs> yeah. were, it was so unreal, but it was real. I think that's actually the definition of culture shock, right? Like this is only stuff that we would see on movies. Like, yeah. it, and in our realities, from our perspective of being American, like this stuff doesn't really exist, but in like Indiana Jones movies, Yeah. you know? But it it's so real. Neat. It was so, so neat. cool. The thing that took us by surprise was it wasn't a tourist trap. I, I truly expected to go and see mostly Americans with a couple vendors there as locals, but I feel like we were by far the minorities wandering around the locals just trying to find what to do and where to go. It was, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, it, it, it was truly a local immersion and we didn't get hassled to buy anything. And right up here in the top, there's a card where that will bring you to our full video about the Souk Waukee if you wanna know more about it. But that leads us to our next section is the kindness and the hospitality of all the people here in Qatar. So every single person on this trip was kind and respectful to us and not in like the, uh, if I'm nice enough, you'll get something. Yeah. But genuinely hospitable. They wanted us to have a good experience Truly. while we were there. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Like the hotel we stayed at, the Golden Tulip, every single person who worked in that hotel, just, just normal workers, made our trip that much more special because the hospitality was everywhere. But they wanted to make sure that we were all comfortable and safe and having a great time. Now, the next section, which seems kind of silly to even mention here, but Ubers and taxis. Transportation in Doha was so easy. We actually ended up just using taxis the whole time because they were incredibly affordable and the local taxi company works in the Uber app. So it was so easy to call a cab 
Everything was cashless, so you didn't have to go to the ATM all the time. And they were really safe and certified. Um, something that surprised me because the people who live in Doha, what's the percentage? It's like for the like, expats. It's like 80% of the entire population of Qatar are expats. Like they're not actually Qatari people. But they all knew English. Yeah. Like I've, I had my app ready to like translate everything, but for the most part, you can get where you're going pretty confidently with, yeah. with everybody there. Now moving on to the next section is restaurants and food. We had the best dining experience of all of our travel experiences here in Doha, Qatar. I mean, no joke, it's probably some of the best food I've had in my life at this yeah. one restaurant. But overall, Doha offered worldly international cuisine but in doha it was incredible what you could find within the souk there's tons of restaurants we ate at one of the really local places where it's just like shish kebabs and naan bread delicious and cheap super good super local but then we also went to restaurants and i'll mention three of them right here that were all incredible more on the finer dining side of things, but worth it if you love food. Bebo is a Spanish-based restaurant where they just take tapas and reinvent the wheel with them, and it was a delicious and fine dining yet casual experience. Something I loved about Bebo was that Shanti was welcome, so the whole family could enjoy it, but the ambiance was, well, I've been to Spain, and it did have that Spanish vibe, because there was tapas, there was a DJ in the corner, kind of dim lights, but still vibrant enough to have like a, an early evening good time. The next one is Shahad Premium, which is actually inside of the Golden Tulip. That restaurant is Pakistanian and yeah. totally authentic, and the flavor is just blew our minds. And the owner will make you feel like you are relatives immediately. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> seriously. He adopted us upon walking in. Thank you, Babad. We love you. Last, but definitely the best out of all of them was Boho Social. We were so impressed with Boho Social that we did a whole entire video just about our experience there. Their cuisine there was the best food Erica and I have ever had in our entire lives. And Shanti. Yeah, I mean, and Shanti loved it too. It got props from a five-year-old, a vegetarian, and a meat lover, and all of us devoured everything. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah, that is the number one. If you go to Guitar and you want to get an amazing meal, Boho Social, 100%. The next section is all about the indoor theme parks in Doha. There are so many, you guys. So, yeah, there's like there's so many. eight indoor theme parks. But the ones that really stood out to us was there was an indoor snow park called Snow Dunes. Snow Dunes is an indoor snow park with tubing, all kinds of slides, snowball fights, yeah. just a good time. They give you full snow gear. Yeah. The boots, the socks. Like you could show up in a bathing suit and flip flops and you will still be taken care of at this place. Yeah. It was uh, endless fun and they totally take care of everything. And then right next door to it is the Angry Birds theme park. Also a really great time. Just think of like a huge, massive arcade on steroids. But Angry Birds everywhere. Yeah, Angry Birds everywhere. And obviously Angry Birds is like a huge thing over here. Now, the indoor theme parks really lead into this next section, which is how family friendly Doha Guitar is. It's almost like the tourism is set up specifically for family tourism. From restaurants to all the public spaces, kids are welcomed everywhere. And also a lot of times for ticketing, the kids are either cheaper or completely free. So with the family friendliness leads us into the next section, which is the safety and cleanliness of Doha. Qatar's commitment to safety and cleanliness is super obvious no matter where you go. The streets are impeccably clean and the low crime rate made us feel extremely safe the whole time we were there, no matter what hour of the night that we were out. As we wrap up our 10 day layover here in Doha, Qatar, we are pleasantly surprised with how much Qatar exceeded our expectations. I actually want to come back. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And we are heading to Nepal where we're going to be volunteering on local farms and small villages, experiencing Kathmandu, experiencing the Buddha temples, all these amazing things that we are so excited for. So like and subscribe, stay tuned for our Nepal adventures to see how we as a family interact with the local community in Nepal. Until next time, happy.